Most apps have a light or dark theme, but what if I told you you could have any color as your theme color, and then the entire app adjusts around that color? Watch this. I choose a background color in this color picker, and all the other colors for the containers and buttons adjust automatically. And even when I choose a very light background color, the text color automatically switches to a dark text, so that it is always readable. In this video, I want to explain every step of how to implement a theme picker like this one. I'm going to show you this for the note taking app Quick Notes. This is a JavaScript project from a past video that you should definitely check out later. Now, to implement a relative color scheme like this, we have to restructure our CSS code a bit. Step one, use custom properties for every color you have in your CSS code. Your color variables are usually defined in the root. I have a brand color, a base color, a surface color, and so on. These colors can be accessed using the var function. Every time I'm assigning a color to an HTML element, I call the var function to pass the variable. So that is already used correctly here. You can also see how we have a light and dark mode color palette, but we don't need that anymore since we want to allow every color. So I will remove the variables in the root, which is the light mode, and I will copy and remove the colors from the dark mode class. Instead, I want to define these variables in the body, but in a completely different way. Right now, these colors are hard coded, and this is a problem. We want to have these colors as relative colors that reference each other. You can use the from keyword for that. In the last video, I used the HSL color format, but many of you pointed out that OKLCH might be an even better choice for relative colors. And you're right, it works very similar to HSL, but it also takes into account how the human eye actually perceives a color, which is different for certain wavelengths. So let's go with that one. To get my relative color palette, I'm going to base everything on the base color variable. So I want the brand color and the surface color to behave relative to that base color variable. Let's delete their values and use OKLCH instead. The surface color is just a slightly brighter shade of the base color. So what we have to do is we say from the variable base color, I'm going to take the L, C and H values. Write it exactly like this. LCH simply stands for lightness, chroma and hue. Chroma is similar to saturation. Then, in your project, the surface color is exactly the same as the base color. But now, of course, we can also modify the individual parts, meaning the lightness, the chroma, and the hue. Let's use the calc function on the lightness value, for example. Here, I want to multiply that one with 1.2. So we are increasing the lightness of the base color by 20%. You can also adjust the chroma or the hue, but for me, the change in lightness is enough. And if we look on the website, we can already see how the surface color is slightly brighter than the base color. And if I now change the base color, you will see how the surface color changes the same way, just 20% brighter. So even if I choose a dark green base color, the surface color will simply be a 20% brighter green. Pretty cool. But we can also base the brand color variable on the base color, which is the very saturated color for our buttons. So let's do the same thing again. Use OKLCH. OK from the base color, I take the L, C, and H. And this time, it needs to be much brighter and much more saturated. So calculate lightness times 3. And on the chroma, calculate the chroma times 5. The hue will remain unchanged. Now let's check the result in the browser. You can see how both the surface and the brand color behave relative to the base color. If I choose a dark blue base color, the brand color will be a strong blue value. And just on a side note, the exact values you need to make this look perfect are probably not 3 and 5, which I chose at random. This is just to explain this to you guys in a simple way. I know that there's probably a web designer watching going crazy about this, so you will have to fine tune this a bit if you seek perfection. Okay, now that we have all of that, how can we now let the user be in control of the base color? For that, we need, of course, a color picker in HTML. In the header, I will add a label for the base color input with the content background. Inside, there is the input of type color with the ID base color input. This is a very simple color picker on the website. Make sure to add a tiny bit of CSS to make it look good. All right, now to the important part. When the user chooses a color, we want to update the base color variable. So let's use the onInput attribute. Here, we call a JavaScript function every time the user does anything in the color input. The function will be setColor, and we pass this as an argument. The this keyword will pass the entire input element itself to that function, so that we can access the value property inside the function to retrieve the color. Let's open the script tag at the bottom to define the function setColor. The parameter is the input element. To show you this, let's write a console log to output the input.value. 
In the browser window, the moment I select a color, you can see the color being printed to the console. That means we can now use this input.value to override the base color variable in our CSS. And if you have your variables in the body selector, then you can easily override them with document.body.setAttribute. Let's override the style attribute. And with backticks, we access the base color variable to assign the input.value as the value. And now on the website, that should already make the color picker work. Awesome. But there are a few problems with this approach. You see how no matter what color I choose, as long as it is on the more darker side, it will look all right. But as soon as I choose a bright color, things are going to look ugly. That is because of the white text color. The text color is not a relative color. And it is not possible to achieve this using only relative colors. Because we need a dark text color if the background is light and a light text color if the background is dark. In the future, we will be able to use the contrast color function in CSS. This one returns a guaranteed contrasting color. But as of right now, it is still experimental with 0% browser usage. So it sounds like we have to do this in JavaScript. In our setColor function, all we need is the lightness value from the selected color. The problem is, our input.value color will be a hex code. And for some reason, there is no JavaScript function that I know of that converts hex into HSL or OKLCH. We need a color format where we can read the lightness value from. So let's call a function getLightnessFromHex and pass the input.value. Let's define this function below. This function should return a lightness value between 0 and 100, similar to OKLCH. To do this, we first remove the hashtag from the hex code and then extract the R, G and B values from the hex color. After that, it can calculate the perceived brightness of the color. And since human eyes are more sensitive to green than red or blue, this formula will weigh the channels accordingly. At the end, the brightness is returned as a number between 0 and 100. And when we have this value in the set color function, we can adjust the style attribute of the body. So let's use the same line we used before and add the text color variable to it. Here, we want to check if the lightness is above 60, then we'll set the text color to black. Otherwise, we'll set it to white. And that should fix the issue. Now the text color automatically adjusts exactly as it should. So when I choose a light background color, the text color will switch to black. But the secondary text color is not doing that. And if you have been listening closely, you know exactly how to fix that. Since the secondary text color is just a slightly weaker version of the text color, we can use a relative color again. In CSS, for the secondary text color, we say OKLCH from the variable text color, we take the LCH, and after the slash, we adjust the transparency. Make it 0.6. That will make the secondary text color behave relative to the text color. Great stuff. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this feature. Maybe you have some ideas of how to improve this even further. There's always room for improvement. If you want to learn how to build this entire note-taking app from scratch using JavaScript, then check out the full Quick Notes project linked right here. And if you're serious about learning JavaScript and building projects like this, then you can always get my full JavaScript course linked in the description. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.